Third grade language lesson 23. So this is review. Go ahead and get out your language books and open them to page 25. You can pause the video while you do so. So we are in, at, in proof A at the top of our paper. We are going to correct each run on sentence by using proofread remarks to add punctuation and to show which letters should be capitalized. So we're using our proofread remarks. So a run on sentence is two complete thoughts that is all combined together in, in, one, in one group of words. So we have to figure out what our two complete thoughts are. A sugar glider is a nocturnal animal. It is very cute. So there's two complete thoughts in there. A sugar glider is a nocturnal animal. That's a complete thought. It is very cute. That is another complete thought. So we are going to have to use our carrot to put a period after animal. And then, now it is very cute, is now its own sentence, so that I will have to be capitalized. So that is how you will do all of proof A. In right B, we're going to correct this run on sentence by, at the end of their sentence in a little box, they have, this is the first one, they have comma, but in there. Okay, so now they want us to complete this run on sentence by using a comma and the conjunction but, or the joining word but. Okay, so sugar gliders are small, they can glide up to 150 feet. So they're definite, that definitely is a run on sentence. There is definitely two complete thoughts, or there are definitely two complete thoughts in that sentence. Sugar gliders are small, that's one thought. They can glide up to 150 feet. That's another thought. So you will rewrite the sentence. Our small, comma, but, you're using what they have at the end of the sentence. They, now we do not have to capitalize our T because this is just continuing. We're making it one sentence using a comma and a joining word. Comma, but they can glide up to 150 feet. So that is how you will correct your run on sentences in think B or write B. And then in think C, you're gonna draw a line between your subject part and predicate part of each sentence. Remember, subject part tells us who or what. The predicate part tells us what happened. Um, and think D. You're going to identify each sentence by writing declarative, interrogative, exclamatory, and imperative. Declarative tells us something, makes a statement. Interrogative asks us a question. Exclamatory shows fear or surprise. And imperative gives a command. Put your pencil down. Make your bed. Unload the dishwasher. These are all commands, okay? So you will write the correct abbreviation on the line, you will, and then you will use your proofreader marks to mark which letters should be capital letters and to add your punctuation at the end. So every first letter in each one of those sentences should have capital letter lines under them. And then at the end of each sentence, there needs to be a carrot with either a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. Turn to page 20, or page, I'm sorry, page 26. On page 26, you're going to use proofreader marks to add the necessary commas and in, and in punctuation to each sentence. Olivia and Bella, have you seen these magazines? So remember when we directly address someone, we speak to them in a sentence, we place commas before and after their name. But if, if their name is at the beginning of the sentence, a sentence wouldn't begin with a comma. Um, and then remember, um, if we use the word no or yes at the beginning of a sentence. No, comma, I did not eat all the ice cream. Yes, comma, my sister ate all the ice cream. So, so if you're using no or yes at the beginning of a sentence, we have a comma after them as well, okay? And even if you use um, an interjection like, wow, that is amazing. You would have a comma after that interjection as well, okay? Uh, well, uh, you know what? I'm sorry. We haven't even got to interjections. That comma is there for 
another reason. Well, that still was the truth, but we haven't got there yet. All right, and then on think B, you're going to, uh, the picture contains singular nouns, plural nouns, and some words that are not nouns at all. Some of the plural nouns are not spelled correctly. Use the color key to color the picture. Finish coloring the picture. Oh, and it tells you, it tells you um, singular nouns, you will color, the people you will color gray, the places you will color green, the things you will color black, and then on the plural nouns, if they're spelled correctly, you will color them a light brown. If they're not spelled correctly, you will color them dark brown. And if they're not a noun at all, you will color that um, red. Cool, so that would be a nice thinking exercise. Sharpen those little brains up.